Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. Man, I'm so in love with this game, I don't know what it is about it, but it is extremely satisfying to play it. In today's episode I want to switch from a oxygen diffuser setup to an electrolyzer one. However, in one of the care packages I received a pip and they now actually hatched. So I decided it's time to make another liquid lock at the bottom of our base and in here we're gonna make our second cooling system that I might possibly use for my incubators. So eventually we wanna hook these up to power, I think I'm gonna fill up the entire room with incubators and we need to leave a little bit of space in order to do the automation. Now what is so special about the pips? If you can, don't kill them off, collect them somewhere in order to use later. They essentially walk around, pick up seeds and plant them. The reason we want that over a planter box is the planter box requires phosphorite in order to fertilize this and if we have this planted in a natural tile it's gonna require nothing, nothing to maintain it, it's just gonna be free coolness. We don't have to rain you might say here but uh, we do have a solution for that as well. Let me get into mechanized airlocks. Now actually let me try that. What we want to do is set up something like this. That should be good and in between each of these gaps I want to set up a mechanized door. Looks like our liquid lock is in place as well so I'm also gonna set up a gas pump in order to get all this stuff out of this room. We want to fill this up with hydrogen and I might not have mentioned that but the reason we want to fill this up with hydrogen just like we did with the steam room right here, this is full of hydrogen. If we just briefly check out the properties of hydrogen, it has a thermal capacity of 2.4, so it can store a lot more heat than other gases. For instance, oxygen uh, has 1.0, contrary to 2.4. What else could we use? Maybe carbon dioxide, 0.8. I mean, this is crazy. Hydrogen is just the best gas in order to store some heat or coolness power I'm just gonna briefly grab from over here that should be good we just want to pump everything out there we go our mechanized airlocks are in place what we want to do now is deconstruct them and if you deconstruct them in a way such as this they are actually gonna leave behind a complete tile wait hold on where's my oh there's my pip <gasps> no my pip is uh, confined but you can see it is actually working unfortunately my pip just decided to get stuck there behind the rock Whoa, I just noticed we have a million calories. This is insane. Maybe we should uh, compost a few things. <laughs> yeah, our storages are just completely full. Meal lice. Jeez, nobody wants meal lice anymore. I think I'm just gonna scrap everything that is below 90% in quality. I mean, we can afford it at this point. You know, considering we have so many calories, maybe after the oxygen production with the electrolyzers, we could think about setting up the training room for astronauts and experimental dupes. I'm looking forward to that. We will have a lot of dupes we don't really want to get to know because, well, they might not live too long for our experiments. Little progress update, got a whole bunch of iron ore in the joint, just a few more spots to go and then we can fill this all up with wheeze wards and we're gonna make a quite efficient and especially cheap cooling system out of it. Wonderful, check this out. We have 14 spots. Maybe we should do a 15th. Yeah, I have to take this apart though. But 15 sounds like a great number. Where did my pip... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where did my pip go? Ah, freaking booger is stuck again. <laughs> I just... Uh, these guys, man, I just don't understand them. Let's build this quickly. In the meantime, we also want to get a storage in the joint and collect the ward seats. So right in here, seed, we want to have ward seed, priority 9. Wait, how many ward seeds do I even have? Oh, only 6. Okay, so we need to explore the map a little bit as well. Let's deconstruct the storage bin and actually get these seeds planted. Ah, this is going to be great, but I have to get them out of the other chest. Uh, where's my seed chest? I think this one because otherwise my duplicates are just gonna bring them back over here and they need to lay here on the floor for my pip to plant them. This pip still lives for 80 cycles, so we, we have time for this project. Come on, boy, can we see you in action? Yeah, grab, grab one, take one, it's for you, it's for you. Uh, everything is good. I mean, we could potentially use this uh, future room that we're making in order to not only cool the incubators, but uh, the rest of the base that needs cooling. 
For instance, we have this general storage area. 30 degrees seems a little bit much. Everything here is actually good. We are going to thermoregulate the water actually before we input it. So one of my next temperature moves is going to be to instead of pumping this directly into my water tank, we are first going to check its temperature. And if it is above 20 degrees, we want to send it through either the aqua tuner or most likely through this pool of water. But let me now think a little bit about our electrolyzer setup. I'm kind of thinking to start doing that right here, though. This might be a little bit cramped. I'll have to see. Ah, here we go. I suspected as much. What you need is at least 100 grams of any atmosphere in the joint before they start planting the seeds. Now, hopefully they're going to plant them everywhere, but maybe it's going to be one space apart. We'll have to observe that. In order to do that, I quickly recreated my electrolyzer setup here at the bottom just to get some more hydrogen over here and also fill up this new cooling room. The actual oxygen producing system we're going to build on the top here. Now, I don't think I have enough space, actually. Let me check this out. So we want... Hmm... The electrolyzer like so. Yeah, I think I need at least two more. No, one more space. So we already have five spaces here. We are going to raise the base a little bit more. <laughs> and for now, I'm just going to do it up to this point. We will be able to enter into the room. And I guess right here we want to replace all of these tiles as well. As we're expanding the base, we could already think about how we want to cool down our water. So instead of just bringing it over at any given temperature we have it here, we might be interested in first trying to cool it down. For instance, right here, we could make a little detour instead of going straight. And we're going to introduce a thermo sensor. This guy right here on the pipe. We are then going into a liquid shutoff, and if we do it like so, we might even have the space to do the same thing in a mirrored fashion with the gases that we are eventually going to clear. Well, it's going to be the oxygen specifically. Considering the water is coming out of a tank, it's always going to have the same temperature. So I think what we can do is lead this into the liquid shutoff and then directly out. So if it is too hot, no, if it is cold enough already, it's gonna continue. All we have to do is hook this up with an automation wire, maybe give it some power and we should be okay. We now wanna get from this liquid shut off all the way into our cooling tank. And in order to do that, I think I wanna utilize this tile. And I'm looking at this loop. We could just bridge over here to make it easier. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm not gonna need this buffer. Let's just uh, place this bad boy. And we are going to sever this connection and this connection. That means we can now take this pipe and connect it directly to the shutoff. We are going to continue to this point right here. I want to make my way back. So we need to leave a little bit of space. I'm going to bridge over and down. And this is where we use the radiant pipes. So this goes right there. Radiant pipe uh, iron. We need to craft some more. But now that we have our refinery set up, we should be good. I'm only going to use one line. This still leaves us a little loop to cool something else. Though we will have to think about how much pipes we really want to set up. Oh, hold on. Actually thinking about it. After we went through the loop, we have to check the temperature again. Huh. Actually, we could just go ahead and move over here directly, then check the temperature somewhere here instead of moving the liquid to the right first. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna cancel everything right here. We want to connect this again. However, at this point, we're going to disconnect this. We're still going to let this pipe empty before we deconstruct it. But now we can bridge over here and save a little bit on piping and space. Let's see. I'm going to bridge over here in order to make sure we have the correct flow. Then we're going to do the liquid shutoff thing with the sensor right there. If the temperature is too high, we want to go down into our cooling loop. Then we want to come back up like so and bridge back into the sensor. However, if the water is cool enough, then the shutoff is going to be turned off and we are going to continue on our merry way and actually get back into our water reservoir. Uh, let's see, we could already use our existing piping. So we just go up here into our liquid vent. Okay, I think we can unpause the game. Uh, let these pipes drain out a bit so I can deconstruct them. And we possibly want to craft a couple of iron pieces. So let's do, let's do five crafts. In terms of power, all we need is the liquid shutoff. And then we need some automation wire as well. So cooling the water down is actually an incredibly cheap 
endeavor. Uh, good boy, good boy. Check this out. It's coming along. You know what? I almost feel like it's more organized if we do it like so. Yeah, this is much nicer. Ah, sensor is in place. Okay, what do we want? We want to send the liquid. Let me check this again. The output is going into the cooling loops. Therefore, we want to send a green signal if it is above 20 degrees. Sure, let's try that. All right, looks like we were able to free up some space for our oxygen electrolyzer setup. The design I'm going for, I think I've seen something similar. I, I don't remember it exactly, but Brothgar made something like that. So this is inspired by him. And what we essentially want to do is we want to set up our electrolyzers in a way so that we have one here. Then there is going to be a little wall. We have a pump probably in this position, another wall, then another electrolyzer. I'm building them out of gold amalgam. Let's go for iron, that seems more logical. One electrolyzer is producing around 800 grams of oxygen and 200 grams of hydrogen. It's, it's not exactly that, but around that. So you need one pump, no, actually two pumps in order to supply one electrolyzer. The thing is the pump for the hydrogen is gonna need to be much less powerful. So what we're gonna do is set up two electrolyzer for one hydrogen pump here in the center. So we're gonna take our gas pump and place it right here. Naturally, we want this all to be set up on airflow tiles. Uh, actually, not the pump. Uh, we want this to be insulated tiles and we want those to be insulated tiles. Now, the problem is we cannot actually do maintenance this way. So I think what we should do is set up some airlocks like this. Since the hydrogen is going to be forced all the way up, it should naturally flow into this gas pump. And we don't want airflow tiles below that as the oxygen will be pushed down. So what we want is two additional pumps and maybe set up like this. So they are a little bit offset and that should hopefully collect the oxygen. Now, if we wanted to go big, we could just rinse and repeat that. So right here, we would start the exact same setup, but maybe we should first test whether or not that works. Gonna build myself a little second floor. So we wanna be able to actually enter from here. Set up an airlock here and uh, we will also have one there. Ah, uh, looks like I already found another cold biome. We're gonna dig our way all the way up there, grab some more wheeze wards. And that's nice. That's actually one, two, three, four more seats. Perfect. You know, I'm actually thinking about running my main power cable through this since it's so close. I should really do that. If we just go in here, for instance. Easy. Hold on. I totally forgot to check what my water loop is doing. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We're going in here, coming back, checking again. Hmm. We now have water coming in at 11 degrees. Maybe that is a little bit cold. To compensate for that, we could set the temperature a little bit higher here. That is definitely an option. Or we do it completely differently and actually build a cooling system that is exactly 20 degrees. Ah, no, even better. We're gonna make the loop much smaller. Ah, this is just perfect. I mean, we're going through the loop multiple times anyways if we don't have the right temperature. So it can be smaller and we're just gonna make use of it multiple times. There, we even save a little bit on material. Thank you. Yes, that's more like it. Now we are at 18 degrees. So maybe we're gonna go one or two degrees below the 20 degree mark. But that's actually pretty good. And it was about time. Our water here is already at 25 degrees. Okay, that's another thing sorted. Now I looked this up and it looks as though the pips are only able to plant if there are no more than two other plants in a five tile radius. So since we have uh, one plant here and then one, two, three, four, five, another plant here, we cannot have yet another plant nearby this. I thought this was such a good idea. With that being the case, I think what I want to do is have two plants here. So we can have another plant here, I guess, in the center. That's good. And then two more plants like so. That should work out theoretically. The rest, I guess, I'm just going to fill up with the farm tiles like so. Not my preferred solution, but we learned something about pips. Oh, 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 I totally forgot. Uh, uh, oh, oh, thankfully they haven't built this yet. What I want to do is shut off the power. We want to enable this when we're ready. <laughs> 
Man, we have just way too much food. I think what I'm gonna do is take apart this stable. It's just, it's just going crazy. We're doing well enough with just two stables, I would say. The last thing we need for our electrolyzer setup is, of course, fresh water. And I'm gonna take granite pipes because our fresh water should be cooled, helping out with cooling the base as we go up. So there we go. You go right into my beautiful electrolyzers. This should work out. Ah, we have another problem. Of course, now that my water tank is full, this is not flowing through constantly and therefore we are seeing temperatures as low as 5 degrees. Interesting. Well, it will need some tweaking. At the moment, I don't mind if it's actually coming in a little bit colder. But eventually, I think we have to use some fine precision for this. Okay, sweet. The electrolyzer setup is ready. At the moment, I set the pipes to go straight out, except the oxygen pipes, they go over here. But until we have the oxygen pumped out here at the top, I think that's what we might want to do. You know what? Let me briefly disconnect my electrolyzers and then we are gonna connect the system so we are, well, first of all, pumping this room empty. That might be the easier solution. Ooh, cycle 300. Well, instead of just pumping the hydrogen outside of the base, we might want to collect that. I think for the time being, I'm just going to do that within a tank like so. Very easy. So we'll be going down here and directly into the tank. This is just temporary. Looks like we're almost ready. The last thing we want to do is hook this up to our main system. Now, actually, this uh, oxygen will be coming out pretty hot, so we might want to <laughs> temper regulate that as well. Maybe we want to run our main oxygen line all the way along here. If we intend to duplicate this setup over here, we're gonna need two full pipes in order to distribute it. So instead, we want to run a pipe down here. Yeah, that should be good. And then another pipe is gonna come from the second setup and we just go all the way down here. This is gonna be a little bit of bad decor. Hmm. So what if we went outside of the base just very briefly? We continue down the line here and there. We have to make our way over here to the cooling system. Okay, I think I, the plan is developing. And then we are cooling the oxygen off a little bit. So we're gonna take radiant pipes. Now, ooh should we do steel? This is a little bit of a problem because the ore is not quite as conductive as uh, the refined metal. So I guess steel is actually the thing to go for. Let's actually check the properties here. We have, whoa, 108 conductivity. So we're gonna do something like that and that. Connect you up and then we can continue on our merry way. The first pipe is gonna loop straight back over here and it's actually going to join our oxygen line. And as of this point, I think I also want to insulate everything I have in terms of oxygen. Do I even need this? Hmm. Anyways, the gas pipe from the other setup is gonna go down instead. So we have one going up, joining these lines and then another one going down. And we're just gonna follow along the base here and probably at this point uh, go up. Where do I have my other thing? Yeah, right there. So we kind of want to do it symmetrical and then I guess at some point join up with each other. Great, so far so good I would say. Now let's bring this pipe down over and we want to set up a gas vent, a whole bunch of them. We're gonna have one on a similar level over here connected with this side okay then we're gonna have another one let's see hmm let's do one here and there we're gonna do one here and there and then last but not least one here and another one there nice so this is gonna be the new way to distribute our oxygen i wonder if this is gonna work this way but if it does we can say our oxygen diffusers goodbye Oh dear, there's uh, lots of piping to do, but it does look quite organized. You have to give me that. Yeah, I have to admit that this is going to take them a while. I love exchanging oxygen pipes. The oxygen is just gonna go into the room doing what it's supposed to do anyways. It's much more of a hassle with liquid pipes. Speaking of liquid pipes, ooh, look at our generator setup. This is amazing. This is just unbelievable to me. This is crazy. If I set this to below 20 degrees, then I'm getting the hot packages in the right pipes. <laughs> uh, if it is above, then it should 
send the green signal. So it opens up the shutoff. But right now it just works the other way around. And now I'm getting the cold packages flowing out. Before it was just doing the opposite. And sending the cold packages back into the loop. Hmm, this might have something to do with the flow. I'm not sure. I mean, since we are always kind of waiting before we push the next one into the liquid shutoff. Oh no, <laughs> something I didn't consider. The pips also plant them inside of the farm tiles. Well, that is quite unfortunate. Yeah, they're sure taking their sweet time to build the outside pipes. However, we are getting closer to an end here. At the moment, I'm struggling a little bit distributing all the oxygen with just two diffusers. I guess we can actually take this one out of commission already. Might be useless knowledge, but I just figured out with the enter key you can quickly toggle on or off a building. Of course still a duplicate has to do it, but I don't know what else to talk about while I'm waiting for my pipes to be built. Yes, there we go, okay. Ah, thankfully I still understand it. Now that the water is actually flowing, we have the opposite. We now have the warm packets going out into the water tank and the coal packets cycling in the thing. So we have to put this above again and this should reverse the effect. So now we get the coal packets here at 5 degrees and the warm packets here at 27 degrees. Yeah, look at that. Now that we are stuck again, we will be getting the hot packets going out and the coal packets in here. <laughs> So in this case we will have to think about a better system and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little loop around. So we're gonna go straight back into here. So now we're just gonna cycle the water once through the loop no matter what happens with the temperature. It's gonna be below 20 degrees and then later on we'll think about a more precise solution to achieve that. At this point, I think we've built everything. Yeah, it's looking good, actually. Okay, it's time to activate the system. In order to do that, all I have to do is hook up the electrolyzers. And we should be golden. Yeah, there we go. They're already producing gases. So let's see. Is the oxygen gonna make it into the wrong gas pump? Uh, no, this is actually looking pretty good. Pretty solid solution, I think. Uh, hold on. This, of course, I don't want that anymore. So we can deconstruct this. Then it's gonna flow down. Okay, and ooh, we got a little bit of hydrogen in the lower gas pump. But at the moment, it doesn't look like the hydrogen is actually making it down there. So maybe that was just a one-time mistake. Let's hope for it. Either way, we're getting the oxygen to 6 degrees. That is a little bit cold. But uh, once we take away the Wii's wards, hopefully we can counteract that. But once again, just like with the water, at some point we want to do this precisely. Right now, it's just about cooling down the base no matter what. So now all these packets are gonna be distributed among the base. That is great. And we have packets coming in from the other side. Okay, let's make the second setup right away. Uh, that's one here, gas pump and another one there. Gas pump here, there and there. Want some airflow tiles. A way to get power like so. Actually, let's go ahead and hook this all up. We want some doors like so. Another one here. Okay, actually looking really good. Another thing I want to do uh, maybe is lock these doors. At the moment we don't need to do anything else in here. The thing is also this room we first want to pump out completely. So I'm just gonna make a high gas pressure vent over there. I want a proper vacuum before we get this started. Ah, so one problem we're going to have is for some reason the oxygen cannot flow up here in order to supply this as well. I wonder if there is a specific way I can fix this. Okay, time to enable the electrolyzers. They just need to be hooked up with some piping and then I guess as soon as we have the correct gases everywhere, we can get this started. The pumps at the bottom, I think we can hook up now. So the oxygen flows here and then, yeah, we only have hydrogen left in the upper pump. Good stuff. So connect this as well and I can get rid of the rest. No, we have a little bit of oxygen in there. Okay, this is gonna block my pipe, isn't it? So much can go wrong with these setups. Now, why do we have this situation? Ah, okay, so that makes sense. These pipes are full because they are... Wait, why are you stuck here? No! Okay, this is an unreachable build. Oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> 
I cannot even build a ladder. I have to literally destroy the fertilizer. Check this out. I had no idea you could actually store different things in the tank. <laughs> I just assumed you can only have one gas in there. Yeah, let's build a second one of those and uh, just keep keep going. There we go. Now we're going to make this build actually reachable. Priority 9. Very good. My pipe is fixed and this is gonna fill up the Atmo suit. It's gonna distribute amongst the base. That's great. Just a bit more. I want to see the oxygen disappear from this system just like we have it here. Okay, actually looking good. Now let's observe the gases a little bit. They should actually all flow, at least most of them. Yes, look at that. That's really good. It's gas over pressure. Let's get rid of our current oxygen system here as well. Of course, this is contributing. Good, with that out of the way, we have completely switched to the electrolyzer system and from the looks of it, we are producing more than enough. We are producing enough to supply our base as well as the exosuits. Okay, and this time it also seems to behave a little bit better in terms of distribution. This is awesome. This is absolutely amazing. Okay, now we just need to take care of our hydrogen basically. In our power room, we want to keep the mesh tile to let the water flow. Then we are going to set up some hydrogen generators. We can possibly do four. Yeah, uh, actually, let's store some hydrogen first. So we're only going to do three generators. This should be more than enough. As usual, going to have the granite tiles below the generators. Then we are going to supply this with power and some tiles. Airflow right here and then all I have to do is complete the loop or add an additional snake line and maybe add some more polluted water. But I think I'm gonna do that in between the episodes. We accomplished something great today. Sustainable oxygen, even overproduction. So maybe later on we can store it and liquefy it for rocket stuff. But yeah, with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.